Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing my August wrap up. So in terms of the videos that I made this month, uh, one of the first videos I put up was an unboxing video. I unboxed the July book of the month selections that I got as well as the Afro Future box which was sent to me kindly by the people who created the box. If you haven't heard of the Afro Future box, it basically focuses around Afrofuturism, which is basically like African-American science fiction. And if the box sounds interesting to you, there is a coupon code in there. I don't get any sort of like kickback if you use the code or not, but it's basically a discount code for you guys that they were nice enough to send along. I also put out the first discussion video about Brothers Karamazov. It just talks about the first half of the book so far. I'm not quite done with this book yet. I still have a little bit more to go, but there will be a discussion video coming up most likely next Friday, talking about the rest of the book and the book as a whole and my experience as a whole. Definitely am not going to talk too much about it here, but I have like mixed feelings about this book, which if you watched my discussion video, uh, you would have picked up on that already. But I'm excited to talk about this with you guys because I know there are a bunch of people who really, really love this book. There are other people who have not. So yeah, I'm very interested to see just sort of where everyone falls on the spectrum with this book. I also put up a little bit of a different video. I did a what's in my bag video, which a lot of you guys really liked. A couple of you guys were not big fans of it. You prefer I stick to the book videos, which I mean, I suppose will always happen when it comes to booktubers. Uh, but I basically just do what I want. It's my channel. I like sort of mixing it up every now and then and doing something different. So it was fun for me and I'm glad so many of you guys enjoyed it as well. And then the final videos that I put up this month had to do with like bottle books, but I will talk about that a little bit more as we jump into the discussion of the books that I read this month. So the first book I want to talk about is actually a holdover from the end of July. I recorded and posted my July wrap up a little bit early in the month, like a couple of days before the end of the month and I ended up finishing one more book and that was The Lone Ranger and Tanto Fist Fight in Heaven by Sherman Alexie. This is the second Sir Sherman Alexie books that I read from him. Um, I read Adventures of a Part-Time Indian a couple of years ago and I really really enjoyed it and I've been meaning to pick up more of his books and this one is fantastic. I mean I knew it was going to be really good because it's probably his most popular book but it was such a great collection of short stories. Like I am someone who doesn't always click with short stories. If you've been watching my channel you know that but this collection is so fantastic. Sherman Alexie is just an amazing, amazing writer. He is able to write in this way that is simultaneously like heart-wrenching and heart-affirming. He finds this really great balance between the tragedies that a lot of Native Americans have to deal with while also still being like funny and inspiring. Um, there's a lot of really dark humor in here. One of the really great things about this short story collection as well is that some of them are like linked and connected so you do get to see some characters uh, through a couple of the different stories but you see either secondary characters become main characters or you see them from like a different angle or a different time in their life. But yeah this is just a fantastic fantastic collection. Uh, there's a reason why Sherman Alexi is very well loved and this is a great collection to pick up if you haven't read anything from him before um, or if like me you'd only read Adventures of a Part-Time Indian. This is definitely a great short story collection to pick up. I highly recommend it. I gave it I believe a four out of five stars. The next book that I finished was A Rising Man by Abir Mukherjee. This is a historical fiction mystery book that's set in Calcutta in 1919. You are following this British officer who is used to work for the Scotland Yard. He ends up moving to India. It's about him sort of like getting acclimated to Calcutta during that time period uh, but he also is like working on the police force and so the case that he's solving is there is this high up British official who is found dead in the river and so he's investigating to see what happened to this guy. I had mixed feelings about this book. It's like 500-ish pages which I felt like was a little bit too long in my opinion but I enjoyed the mystery. I enjoyed the setup. I really enjoyed the way that it's set in this specific period of time in India. And if you don't know anything about this time period and the relationship between the British and the Indians, Abir Mukherjee does a really great job of weaving in historical information without it being like too dry or too heavy handed or anything like that. So he doesn't assume that you know anything about it. So he provides you with any information that you need to know um, and you're able to pick up relatively easily. Some of it did feel a little bit like too easy. There's like a love interest in here which just felt like happened a little too easy but I feel like that in general a lot of times with mystery books. And then also like the main character in this story is a very like progressive British person so like he's one of those people who doesn't like understand why people are so mean to the Indians or look down upon Indians or looks down upon like mixed race people. There is a mixed race character in here as well which is pretty great. But yeah he just seems like a little bit too accepting of everything and part of me was reading this and being like mm, 
did people like this really exist? Maybe. I don't know. I wasn't alive in 1919, but it just seemed a little bit too uh, easy of a way to point out sort of like the racist ideals that were happening during the time period, but I suppose that's better than it just being full of racist ideas. So. <laughs> So yeah, if you're someone who likes just like straightforward British detective stories, if you like historical fiction, this is a great one to probably check out. It is the first in a series and I definitely plan on picking up more from this author as the series goes along because I think that it's interesting time period, it's interesting main detective. And so yeah, I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. The next book I finished was When Dimple Met Rishi. This is a young adult contemporary book. I feel like it was one of the big buzzy why contemporary books that came out this year and it was a fun read. I ended up picking it up because I was reading The Brothers Karamazov and I was like I really need something just like light and fun and fluffy to read to balance that out and this basically scratched that itch perfectly. So in this story you are following these two characters named Dimple and Rishi. Uh, Dimple's parents have like very specific expectations for her and her life. Um, I believe that she's just graduated from high school and she's about to go to college and there is this like computer programming camp that takes place uh, I believe at Berkeley that she really wants to attend and her parents end up agreeing to send her off and then you're following Rishi whose parents also have like very specific expectations but he very much like wants to make his parents happy and so he follows all of those, those expectations and so apparently like Dimple's parents and Rishi's parents are friends and they decide that they want to arrange them together uh, to be married and so Rishi knows this Dimple does not and so Rishi goes to this summer camp to meet Dimple and he assumes that they're on the same page about this um, but they are not and so it follows them over the course of the summer as they're both at this camp and they become friends and if it wasn't completely obvious uh, they kind of fall for each other. Like I said this book was fun it was fluffy the way that it's set up is very much like a Bollywood film so if you've seen Bollywood films you kind of know what to expect out of it. There are great discussions about like Indian family life and culture and the pressures that you feel from your parents but also just like the pressures that you feel from other Americans to Americanize yourself and things like that. Yeah it's just like a light fun fluffy read. I recommend it if you are in the mood for something like that or you're into like a really romantic mushy book. The next book I read was Monday the Rabbi Took Off. This is a book in this Rabbi Small mystery series. Um, I ended up getting this randomly from Amazon because I saw that it was part of like the monthly mystery deals um, and I was in the mood for sort of like a cozy mystery and then for the Red or Dead podcast which is the mystery podcast that I co-host link to it down in the description we decided we wanted to do a cozy mystery episode and so it worked out quite well so I ended up reading this partially because I bought it and partially because we were doing that episode. So in this mystery series you are following this rabbi named Rabbi Small and there's always some sort of like conflict that happens between him and his congregation. In this specific story he decides that he wants to take basically like a sabbatical in Israel because he's never been before um, and he's basically debating whether or not he wants to return back to his home congregation or if he wants to stay in Israel. And then there's also obviously like a mystery that happens in this book but the mystery is sort of like tangential to everything else. A lot of the book just deals with like these interpersonal conflicts and church politics and just Jewish traditions and ideas and things like that and I just found it to be really comforting. Um, that's one of the really great things about Cozy Reads is they're just like very comforting. Was this like my favorite cozy mystery that I've ever read before? No. I've also seen a lot of people say that this isn't actually the best Rabbi Small book to pick up. I kind of want to see if like through my library or something along those lines I can pick up some of the other Rabbi Small books because I kind of liked that it was a mystery that surrounds like a synagogue or and a rabbi and such. The rabbi isn't actually like solving the murder he's usually just like around and then he ends up sort of just like figuring it out in the end by listening to what everyone's saying and picking up all, all of the different pieces. He's not actually like investigating or like being a uh, amateur detective. All right the next book I finished was Negro Land by Margot Jefferson. This is a memoir and I was so excited to read this book and I think my expectations were a little bit too high because I was slightly disappointed. Margot Jefferson was born in 1947 in Chicago. She was basically part of this upper class of black like socialites almost in the city of Chicago and so this book basically just like follows her life. It goes in almost chronological order like literally 
from when she was a little kid and you go sort of like year by year through her life and I think that was just like my main problem with it like it felt like she was just like reading her diary from every year or the chronological order just didn't really mesh with me very well because I think I wanted more like societal and historical sort of discussions around the things that she experienced. This book is really great because it provides a perspective that you don't see very often in my opinion but I think that there wasn't enough of that explored. It feels weird to say but I feel like a lot of this just dealt with like very standard human experiences which I don't know if that was the point or not but there were points where I was reading this and I was like yeah that's a thing just like every teenager goes through and such and like when you're in like middle school and high school you have these issues with your friends yeah that's something everyone deals with and I don't know if it was meant to be a very sort of like relatable thing like that uh, but I think I just wanted more insight in terms of this specific class of people and there is some of that in this book but it just wasn't quite enough in my opinion but those were definitely my favorite parts of the book so yeah I ended up giving this a three out of five stars it wasn't like bad by any means I just think that the style and the structure weren't quite what I was expecting and I think I was just like slightly misled about what this book was going to be. It's one of those situations where I kind of wish I had like no expectations for this book and I probably would have enjoyed it a lot more. Not that I hated it by any means but it wasn't quite the like four star book that I assumed it would be. It was just like a three star book. The next book I picked up was Final Girls by Riley Sager. This is a thriller slash sort of horror novel. It's one of the big buzzy summer books. It was also a book of the month book so there have been a lot of people talking about this book. Again I really like this book. I didn't love this book. I talk about this one quite a bit in my bout of books wrap up so I'm just gonna link to that because again this video is already on the longer side. I think I gave this one like a three and a half out of five stars. My one recommendation would be if you're going to read this book read it in like as big of chunks as possible like set aside a couple of hours so you can really push through it because I think this book is best experience when you can really like immerse yourself in the book but yeah I'm gonna link to my bout of books video so you guys can check that out if you're interested in my full thoughts on this and then the next book that I finished was Yesterday by Felicia Yap this was probably the biggest disappointment for me I gave this one a two out of five stars it's a pretty new release it's part like speculative fiction part mystery thriller there's a certain class of people called manos who can only remember about a day's worth in terms of their short-term memory and then there are duos who can remember about two days worth. So these two classes of people like the monos are seen as basically lesser than the duos because obviously they can't remember quite as far back. And then there's this couple where the wife is the mono and the husband is a duo and they're seen as sort of like this ultimate representation of like this interclass relationship and then one day there is this woman who's found in the river and it turns out that the husband was having an affair with this woman and so it's about figuring out what happened to this woman while also dealing with this society where there's all these people with limited memories. Yeah it was a pretty disappointing book partially because I think this author was trying to do too much. The world isn't built out quite enough to feel real like there were so many holes in the way that this world is set up and it also felt like the author took a lot of shortcuts because it's kind of like our world but it's kind of not like our world and then the mystery felt completely standard the some of the characters in here just felt like complete stereotypes there's a cop character in here who i think was the most interesting and he got the least amount of pages um it switches back and forth between the wife the husband the woman who was murdered and the cop and i would have been so much more interested in this story if it was maybe just from like the cop and someone else's point of view here and there. At least that's how it felt like to me because the cop is also a mono who is pretending to be a duo because cops can't be duos. So yeah I don't know there's just so much happening in the story and it was just so disappointing in the end and I ended up finishing it because I kind of just wanted to see how it was going to wrap up but I was not very happy at the end of it so yeah I don't really recommend it. All right and then the final book that I finished this month is We Gonna Be Alright Notes on Race and Resegregation by Jeff Chang. This is another book that I talked about in my Battle Books wrap up. Um, I didn't finish it during Battle Books so I didn't talk about it too much and I'm not going to talk about it too much here because I'm going to do a full review on this in the month of September because I gave this book a five out of five stars. It's an essay collection. It was fantastic. If you follow me on Instagram and watch my stories you may have seen me like taking pictures of certain sections of this. There's so much of this book that I've underlined and starred and oh it was so good. I highly recommend it but yeah I'm not going to talk about it too much here but I can just say I recommend it to everyone like this is a book that is going on my sort of like what I wish was mandatory reading for all human beings list. So yeah full review coming next month but this is my first five star read of the year and it is 
fully deserves it. All right, that is everything that I have for this video. Just really quickly, the book that I'm currently reading is Sing Unburied Sing by Jasmine Ward. I got an art copy of this and then I got a copy through Book of the Month. I usually don't talk about the books that I'm in the middle of, but I wanted to talk about this one because one, I'm loving it, and two, I'm going to be doing a full review on it on the Book Riot channel. Um, I make videos over on Book Riot. I will link to that in case you guys weren't aware, but I'm pretty sure that I can just automatically recommend this book to you guys. If you get Book of the Month, this wouldn't be a bad one to pick up, although there's a lot of really great selections so I understand what if you wouldn't but yeah this should be on your guys's list if it isn't already it's it's so good so good so yeah that is my August feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions about any of the books that I talked about or if you've read them yourself and you want to talk about them with me always do that down in the comments below otherwise feel free to let me know how your August went let me know what your favorite read was for the month this year mm. That's not a proper sentence. I'm tired. <laughs> Anyways, that's a sign to wrap it up. So yeah, that's all I have for now. And thanks for watching.